Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I am now in this video going to answer question number nine from the International A level Pure Mathematics P3 um, at Excel October 2021 exam. Now, here we have a question about a curve which has equation y equals f of x, where f of x is x times x squared minus 4 times e to the power of minus a half x. And we're asked to find f dash of x, which means find the derivative to differentiate f of x. Now, I can spot here that f of x, let me just um, make this a bit, okay. I can spot here that f of x can be rewritten slightly, um, so I can write it as a product of two different functions here. Because this is x times x squared minus 4, which is like x cubed minus 4x. That's something I can differentiate as one thing. And this is e to the power of minus a half x. So I've spotted that I have two separate functions multiplied by each other, for which I will have to use the, the product rule in order to differentiate. So I can call one of them u and the other one v. So I say let's u equal x cubed minus 4x and let v equal e to the power of minus a half x. So I'm going to find what u dash is, which is 3x squared minus 4. I'm going to find what v dash is, which is, now, to differentiate e to the power of something, well, it stays the same. It doesn't change. So it's still going to be e to the power of minus a half x. However, inside this function, inside the function, there's another function, which is minus a half x. So I have to differentiate that, which gives me minus a half, and I multiply by minus a half. So the minus a half that I'm multiplying with this by is being multiplied by it. Why? Not because I'm multiplying by the power. No, but I'm multiplying by the differential of what's inside the function. Okay, so this is the chain rule. Stays to differentiate something, e to the power of something, it doesn't change. And then you look what's inside the function and you differentiate that and you multiply by that. So it's e to the power of minus a half x times minus a half, which gives us minus a half e to the power of minus a half x. Now, when I'm going to uh, differentiate, I like to write my differential in the, in the following way. So f dash of x is equal to, I like to start from this side and multiply these two together. Most people do the other way. The reason I like to do that is because even though for the product rule it doesn't make any difference because you're going to be adding these two things together, for the quotient rule, which is kind of very similar, you have to do this first because you do this times this minus that times that. So I like to be consistent, so I just do always do this first from the top right to the bottom left. So I do e to the power of minus a half x multiplied by 3x squared minus 4. Then I have plus and this times that. So the plus... Let me just make that clearer so that you can see that there's a, supposed to be a minus there. That's v dash is equal to negative a half e to the power of minus half x. So when I multiply these two together, I'm going to get negative. So I'll end up having plus minus, which is a minus a half e to the power of negative a half x times this bracket x cubed minus 4x. So they didn't tell us to put it in any particular form or factorize it or write it in any particular way. So this two marks, that's enough for us to get the marks for this particular part of the question. And that's perfectly fine. So there's the answer to the first part of the question. Now I'm going to move on to the next part. Okay, now for part B of question number nine. Uh, we already have found the gradient function of f of x. And um, they told us about the line L, which is a line which is a normal to the curve to a uh, curve at O. So it's this line is a normal to the curve at O. So it has the gradient which is perpendicular to the gradient of the curve at the, the origin. And it meets the curve again at P. That's another place where this normal meets the curve. The point P lies in the third quadrant, which is first, second, third quadrant. We're both x and y negative, as shown in figure 3. Show that the x-coordinate of P is a solution of the equation x equals negative a half times the square root of 16 plus e to the power of a half x. Okay, so now we need to basically find the equation of line L first and then show that line L, find where line L intersects this curve. So to find the equation of line L, we need two pieces of information. To find the equation of line L, we need to know a point that it passes through, which we do know, which is origin, which has coordinates 0, 0, which is nice and easy. And we also need to know the gradient of line L. Now what we know is... The gradient of line L is the same as the gradient of the normal to the curve. 
okay the normal to the curve c okay so we need to find the gradient of the normal to this curve and we know the gradient of the normal to the curve can be found if we know the gradient of the tangent to the curve because it will be its negative reciprocal as a perpendicular so to find the gradient of the tangent to the curve we need to know what f dash x what, what f dash x is when x equals zero the, the tangent to the curve at the point where x equals zero so we need to find f dash of zero so we need to substitute inside this function f zero okay so let's go on let's go ahead and do that if we substitute f zero uh or oh, sorry zero into f dash of x if we substitute zero into the gradient function for the function f okay um that's going to be the gradient of the tangent to the curve at zero so let's do that let's find f dash of zero that's going to be e to the power of zero because minus half times zero is zero times three times zero which will be zero minus four minus a half times e to the power of zero and this will be zero minus zero which is zero so this will all become zero and you're left with e to the power of zero which is one times minus four so this gives you negative four that means the gradient of the tangent to the curve is negative four Therefore, the gradient of the normal to the curve is 1 over 4. So that is the gradient of line L. It's 1 over 4, and it goes through the points 0, 0. That means the equation of line L, it's y equals a quarter x. That's the equation of line L. Okay, I'll just move this up here, okay, just to show the steps there. So now we have found the equation of line L. Line L has the equation y is equal to 1 quarter x. Now... The line L intersects with this curve, okay, when we solve this pair of equations simultaneously. So let's take the equation of the curve, which is f of x, and bring it down, down here. Okay, so we want to solve simultaneously see the equation uh, y equals, let's call it y equals x times x squared minus 4 times e to the power of minus a half x and y equals a quarter x. So when you substitute one of these equations into the other, you can solve them simultaneously and find their points of intersection. So I'm going to replace this y here with x times x squared minus 4 e to the power of negative half x. Okay, when they're both in terms of y, you can think of it, you're making them equal to each other. But when they're not in terms of y, both of them, then it's better to think of it in terms of substituting one equation into the other. So where y is in one equation, I replaced it with x times x squared minus 4 e to the power of minus half x. Now what I'm going to do to make life easier is I'm going to multiply by 4 to get rid of the fraction. So I have 4x and I have x squared minus 4 e to, in fact what I'll do in fact I'll I will also I will also expand this bracket so have everything in order. So let me multiply by 4 and expand the bracket. So I'll have 4, in fact, I'll just do it step by step in case it get confusing for some of you. So I have 4x, x squared minus 4, e to the power of minus a half x equals x. And then I'm going to expand the bracket with these two terms multiplying with the terms inside. So 4x cubed, that'll be 4x cubed, e to the power of negative a half x. And that'll be minus 16x, e to the power of negative a half x. Now, as I'm going to try to solve this equation, I'll bring the x on this side as well. So I'll subtract x from both sides, and I'll call this equal 0. I'm going to factorize out of here. Um, the common factor in all three terms is just the x. So I've got 4x squared, e to the power of negative a half x, minus 16, e to the power of negative a half x, minus 1. Taking the x out. So now I have two solutions, either x equals 0, or, which I know, that's where they intersect at one point that's an x equals zero which we already know and the other point or points where they intersect can be found by this equation 4x squared e to the power of negative a half x minus 16 e to the power of negative a half x minus 1 equals zero now i i'm going to try to solve this equation and we have to express it in this form let's bring this down here you have to express it in this form here so it's not like making x a subject. I'm not solving it to make x a subject. I'm solving it, um, and I'm going to have still an x term in there. So I think this is getting it ready for iterative solution, which will probably be part c. So we can see here that I'm trying to make x a subject, but there's also x in the 
um, in the expression. So it's not really making X a subject in a proper way. It's just, you know, making one of the X's here the subject. And I can see it's probably going to be this one because I've got a square root here and I have e to the power of half X. So we're probably making this X square the subject. So first what I'll do is I will add one to both sides. Um, I'll have 4X squared e to the power of... And what I'll also do is I'll write this as... Because this is e to the power of half X. I'll write this as e to the power of half X in the denominator. And this would be minus 16 over e to the power of half x as well, equals 1. Now this is one fraction now. I can express this as one fraction. 4x squared minus 16 over e to the power of half x equals 1. And then I can multiply both sides by e to the power of half x. So I have 4x squared minus 16 is equal to e to the power of half x. Now making um, 4x squared or x a subject, I can add... 16 to both sides, so 4x squared equals 16, to put it in this same format, plus e to the power of a half x. And I've got a little bit of space left at the bottom here. Uh, I can divide both sides by 4. So I'll have x squared equals a quarter. And I'll put in brackets 16 plus e to the power of a half x. I'm almost there, so I can say x equals the square root of all of this, so it's going to be plus or minus a half times the square root of 16 plus e to the power of a half x. Now, it says negative a half here. Okay, why is it negative a half? So we can write down here, now really I should go to the next page, but as I'm almost finished, I'm going to do this, which you should not really do, you should go over to the next page, you have plenty of space and continue there, and then go on to the next part. But what I'm going to say is, as we told that p is in the third quadrant, in the third quadrant, x is 0. Okay, as p is in the third quadrant, that means x is less than 0, it's negative. Therefore, x is equal to negative a half, root 16 plus e to the power of a half x as required. That's what we required to show, and that's what we showed. Okay, we got plus or minus a half. So obviously there's another place where they're going to intersect again, somewhere further up. Maybe the curve turns back up again and goes and intersects at some place. But what we're concerned with is this point here, where x is negative. So there we have found and shown um, in what we are supposed to show. x equals negative, a half, root 16 plus e to the power of a half x. Okay, so we took the square root of both sides here, and I took the square root of a half, became uh, a quarter became plus or minus a half times root of all of that. So there we have the answer to part B. Now I think there's a part C to this question, which we will do now. It says using the iterative formula, x n plus one equals minus a half root sixteen plus e to the power of a half x. N, this is kind of what we just showed, with x1 equals negative 2, find to four decimal places the value of x2. So you should show that x2 is equal to minus a half times the square root of 16 plus e to the power of a half times x1, which is minus 2. You should show that step that you substituted that into there and write down the answer. And it's better to write the answer to more than four decimal places and then show how it rounds to four decimal places. So you have um, minus a half times the square root of 16 plus, you're going to put e to the power of, that's going to be e to the power of minus 1. A half times minus 2 is minus 1. Um, oops, I forgot something here. I forgot the half there, minus a half. 16 plus e to the power of minus 1. And that gives us minus 2.02286, minus 2.02286, let's just make sure, 2286 continues on. So we're going to write this now to four decimal places, 1, 2, 3, 4, so minus 2.0229. So that's the answer for x2 to four decimal places. Okay, and then it says the x coordinate of p. So what we can do here is we can actually set this up now as an iterative formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, to find the x coordinate of p. We have to see how this settles down. 
Okay, this, this question is only worth three marks, right? So both parts of it. So there's nothing elaborate you have to show, but in your calculator, what you can do is you can keep putting back the next value of like x2 back into here, and then x3 back into here, then x4 back into here. You keep putting back the new value of x back into here until it settles down to a particular solution. That's how you can find the value um, of the uh, solution to the equation. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this. So first of all, the first number we're putting in is minus 2. So I'm going to put minus 2, put negative 2, equals. Now that is the answer now in my calculator. That's the answer in my calculator. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up exactly as it's, as it's written here. So it has minus, no, it has minus 1 over 2. We'll have to do it like this way. Let's say minus and then fraction a half. And then we've got the square root of. And we have 16 plus and we have e to the power of. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put e to the power of a half times the answer. So I'll put 1 over 2 and then I'm going to put times the answer. Okay, times the answer. That means the minus 2 that I put in the calculator is now going to be placed in that place. And we'll see we'll get the same value here. Press equals. And that same value comes up. Minus 2.0228618. Exactly what we had before. That's going up. So we now have got x2. Now if I press equals again, it's going to substitute this back into here. And we'll get a more accurate answer. That gives you minus 2.0226034. So we can, if you want to, you can write down. Uh, what this gives you. So this is minus 2.022. We're going to find the x coordinate of p to four decimal places. All right, so we're going to carry on. So this we can just carry on. Equals, 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 equals. Okay, so it stops at 0 point minus 2, minus 2.0226. Okay, that's four decimal places. Okay, so we can say that part two, this is part one. Part two, we can say that x coordinate of p is going to be minus 2.0226. Okay, that's to four decimal places. That's where it settled down. If you just um, write that down, that's perfectly fine. You could show x3 equals x4 equals x5 equals, but it's fine to just write that down um, in this way. It didn't tell you to justify that that's x coordinate of p. Okay, um, if you did have to justify it then there's a procedure but that's not asked for here um, you can see that in some of the other papers that we've been doing but they only ask us to find the x code on p so you just keep pressing equals until you get to the answer so really i should have set it like this for part one even and then the first time i would have pressed equals i would have got the answer for the first part and keep pressing equals a few more times until it stops until it stops at a particular value here and then you can say this is the solution and write it down to four decimal places and we've got the answer and there we have completed question nine and other questions from this paper you can find in the playlist that should appear in this area other questions from this topic of i guess it's the product rule and iteration product rule you can find here differentiation from p3 over here and iteration um, you can find um, playlist over here which you'll find some of the questions that I mentioned justifying you know why this is the x coordinate of p for example you can find those kind of questions here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon